see you, Tom. You too. It's a lovely place I have here. Uh, may I take your coat? Yeah. Paralyzed with happiness. It's good to see you as well, Daisy. I passed through Chicago on my way here. I mentioned you once, and immediately there were dozens asking you to send their love. <gasps> Do they miss me? The whole town is desolate. How gorgeous. <laughs> Let's go back, Tom. Tomorrow. Sure, Daisy. I'm stiff. I've been sitting on the sofa for as long as I can remember. Don't look at me. I've been trying to get you to go to New York all afternoon. No thanks. I'm in training. You live in West Egg. I know somebody there. <laughs> I don't know a single- You must know Gatsby. He's- Gatsby? What Gatsby? Daisy. Can't you talk about crops or something? <laughs> uncivilized. Everyone's uncivilized because civilization itself has gone to pieces. I've gotten to be a bit of a pessimist about things. Nick, have you read Rise of the Colored Empires? Why not? It's an amazing book and everyone ought to read it. It basically says that the white race is going to be submerged by all these other races. It is very scientific. It's been proven. Tom's getting very profound. He's reading deep books with long words in them. And what was that word that we- These things are all very scientific. This fellow has it all figured out. It's up to us, the dominant race, to watch out or these other races will have full control of everything. We've got to beat them down. You ought to live in Cal. Well, the idea is that we're all Nordics. I am, and you are, and you are, and- and you are, and that we're the dominant race, and we've created everything, all the art, all the science. Do you see? I have to that. I love seeing you at this table, Nick. You remind me of a rose. An absolute rose. Doesn't she? An absolute rose. Don't talk. Don't you know? No, I don't. Why, why Tom got some woman in New York. Some woman? You think she'd have the decency to not call her at dinner time, don't you think? If only he had the decency to call me. What was that, dear? Hey, honey, I'll be hanging out with a couple friends later. You mind keeping an eye on the place for me? Sure, of course. Who's taking you out? You know, the usual people I go out with. Who? The usual, you know. I'll be with Catherine and my other dear friends. I hang around with them all the time. The usual. Now, if you excuse me, I have to go get ready. All right. Have fun. I never expected Tom to go behind Daisy's back to make love to some other girl. But little did I know that she would introduce me to her mistress as well. This is how it all went down, and this is how I ended up drinking for my second time at the end of the day. It all began with a long wait for a ride home. I can't thank you enough for taking me home. The cab wait was longer than I'd expected. It's no problem. Uh, you missed the turn right there. Oh, oh did I? Yeah, the, uh, turn for the- to the, the- It's F, no, no. We're gonna- we're just gonna stop here. I want you to meet my girl. Your girl? Oh, uh, yep. Hello, Wilson, old man. Oh, How's business? Hello. I can't complain. It's been going pretty slow around here. What are you going to sell me that car? Oh, next week, I think. I've got a guy working on it. Works pretty slow, don't he? No, he doesn't. And if you feel that way, then maybe I'd better sell it somewhere else after all. I think. No, I, I didn't mean that. I, I, I just meant- There's chairs in here, so somebody could sit down. All right. I want to see you. All right. You know by the newspaper stand? Lower level. Sorry that took so long. This chair was just stuck in the corner of the closet. Don't worry about it, old man. My friend and I have got to go anyway. I'll get you that car, alright? Thank you. 
George, I'm going out with my friends right about now. Please watch this place for me. Sure, honey. Nice to meet you, Mr. Wilson. Nice to meet you, too. It's a terrible place, isn't it? Awful. It does her good to get away. Doesn't her husband object? Wilson? He thinks she's gone to the city to visit her sister. He's too dumb to know he's alive. After hanging around New York with Tom and his mistress, we had gone to a hotel to celebrate absolutely nothing. It was the second time I've ever really drank in my life, and I can sincerely say that it was not at all that great. The wild night ended with a fist to Myrtle Wilson's face, and in the end, I was pressured with a moral obligation to tell my cousin about her wife's mistress. I received something particularly interesting in the mail the next day, an invitation to Gatsby's party from her own butler. I felt awfully flattered to be invited, but more than anything, I was curious to meet this woman everybody calls Gatsby. I tore my gown on a chair, and she asked me my name and address, and within a week I got a package from Couriers. Did you keep it? Of course I did. I was going to wear it tonight, but the bust was too big and had to be altered. It was blue with lavender beads. $265. There's something funny about a woman that'll do a thing like that. She doesn't want any trouble with anybody. Who doesn't? Gatsby! I once heard... I once heard she killed someone. I don't think it's so much that. It's more that he was a German spy in the war. I heard that from someone who grew up around him in Germany. Oh no, it couldn't be that. Because she was in the American army. I'll bet she's killed me out. Excuse me. You look familiar. Were you in the third division during the war? Yes, I was in the 9th Machine Gun Battalion. <laughs> I was in the 7th Infantry until June 1918. I knew I'd seen you somewhere before. Were you positioned in that village in the south of France? Yes, and it rained the whole month I was there. I thought it was going to drown just sitting on dry land. <laughs> <laughs> I just bought a hydroplane. Would you like to go up with me in little sport? Just along the shore near the sound? Um, when? Whatever time suits you, old sport. Having a gay time now, ladies? <laughs> Much better. This is an unusual party for me. I haven't even seen the host yet. This woman, Gatsby, just sent over her chauffeur with an invitation. I'm Gatsby. <laughs> what? I, I beg your pardon. I thought you knew. My apologies, old sport. I'm afraid I'm not a very good host. Chicago is on the line, Miss Gatsby. If you need anything, just call me, old sport. Excuse me, I will rejoin you later. Who is she? Do you know? Just a woman named Gatsby. Where is she from, I mean? What does she do? Now you're started on the subject. She once told me she was an Oxford woman. However, I don't believe it. Why? I just don't think she went there. Anyway, she does large parties. I like large parties. They're so intimate. At small parties, there isn't any privacy. Miss Baker, I beg your pardon, but Miss Gatsby is asked to speak with you. With me? Yes, madam. I just heard the 
most amazing thing. How long were we in there? Why, about an hour? It was simply amazing. But I swore I wouldn't tell and here I am tantalizing you. Anyways, please call me. I'm in the phone book. Good night, Mrs. Carraway. Good night. So sorry about earlier, Gatsby. And thank you so much for inviting me. I've had such a gay time. Don't worry, old sport. Don't give it another thought, old sport. And don't forget, we're going up in the hydroplane, nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Philadelphia wants you on the phone, ma'am. Uh, just a minute. Tell them I'll be right there. Good night, old sport. Good night. Good night, old sport. Jay Gatsby was more than the girl that threw parties. She was remarkably beyond that. She had picked me up the day after the party to take me to lunch. As we ate, she gave me what I believe to be her life story. She talked about her past, this man named Wolfshine who fixed the 1919 World Series, and the war. She even showed me a photograph of her in the war, which was the only piece of evidence that made me believe her story. I understand now why people talk of Gatsby in the ways they did. Gatsby told stories in a way that made you believe every word was a lie. Regardless, this outing had been more than just Gatsby taking me out and getting to know me. No, it was not that at all. Gatsby had implored me to talk to Jordan Baker. What she had to tell me meant the world to her. I barely know Gatsby, and yet I'm already willing to do nearly anything for her. I couldn't help but to talk to Jordan. Anything to make Gatsby happy. Or Coney Island or something. Does it? What do you say we go to Coney Island right now, old sport, in my car? It's... it's too late. Why don't we take a plunge in the pool then? I haven't made use of it all summer. I... I... I, I have to go to bed, so... Okay. Okay. So I talked with Miss Baker. Um, I'm going to call up Daisy tomorrow and invite her over for tea. I don't want you to go to any trouble, old sport. That's all right. One day would suit you. Whatever day would suit you best, old sport. How about the day after tomorrow? Uh, I can't do that. I can't do that. See, I want to get the grass cut. Uh... There's another little thing. Perhaps you'd like to put it off for a few days? No, it's not that. See, the fact of the matter is, you don't make much money, do you, old sport? No, not really. See, I happen to run a business on the side. Just um, a little bit of something that could make you a lot of money. I've got my hands full. You wouldn't have to work with Wolfsheim at all. Just think about it, old sport. Is everything all right, old sport? The grass looks fine, if that's what you mean. Forget about the grass. I'd rather the rain would stop around four. Um, is everything in shape for tea? Will they do? They're fine. Forget about tea. Nobody's coming to tea. Don't be silly. It's just two minutes to four. Mm -hmm. Um, what is? <coughs> well, I certainly am awfully glad to see you. We've met before. Uh, haven't met in many years, have we? Five years this November. Where, where are you going? Where are you going? I will be back. This is a terrible mistake. This is a terrible mistake. Terrible mistake. You're just embarrassed. She's embarrassed too. She's embarrassed? Yes. And don't be rude. You've left her there all alone.
It stopped raining. What do you think of that? It stopped raining. I'm glad, Gay. I mean, I'm glad, Jay. What do you say we come to my place and I show you around? Sure you want me to come? Absolutely, old sport. The next day, Daisy had invited Gatsby and I over for tea. It was the hottest day of the summer. The hottest day. You can't move. It's so hot. And where's your wife, Daisy? Talking with a client. Rumor is time to get a girl on the phone. Well then, I won't send you the car at all. I'm under no obligations to you at all. And as for your bothering me about it at lunchtime, I won't stand that at all. Miss Gatsby. It's good to see you, Nick. And you, Tom. Daisy, make us a cold drink. We're very hot. Of course. You know I love you. You've forgotten there's a lady present. You kiss Nick, too. You low, poker girl. I don't care. <laughs> do with ourselves this afternoon and the next day and 30 years after that. Don't be so morbid, Daisy. Life starts all over again in the fall when it gets crisp. But it's so hot and everything is so confused. Let's go into town. Well, you hear everyone's been making stables out of garages, but I think I'm the first woman to ever make a garage out of a stable. Who wants to go into oh. town? You look so cool. You always look so cool. It's like that advertisement of that man. The advertisement, you know, of the man. All right. We'll all go into town. Come on, come on, we're going to town. Come on! What's the matter? If we're gonna go into town, we might as well just go. We're just gonna go? Like that? I'm not gonna let anybody smoke a cigarette. You all smoked all throughout lunch. Let's have fun. It's too hot to fuss. Fine. Have it your own way. Come on, Jordan. I just don't see the idea of going into town. Women get these notions in their heads. Shall we take anything to drink? I'll get some whiskey. I can't say anything in this household sport. She's got an indiscreet voice. It's full of... Money. Her voice is full of money. Uh, shall we go in my car? I ought to have left it in the shade. Is it standard shift? Yeah. No. Then you take my coupe and I'll take your car into the city. I don't think there's much gas. It doesn't matter if there's enough gas. If there isn't, we can just go to a store, drugstore, and buy one. You can buy anything at drugstores nowadays. Come on, Daisy, we're taking her circus van into the city. No. You take Jordan to Nick. I'll go with Gatsby. Did you see that? See what? You think I'm pretty dumb, don't you? Maybe I am, but I have almost another sense. And I've been doing an investigation on her, you know. And I found out everything. So you found out she's an Oxford woman? <laughs> an Oxford woman? She's wearing a pink shirt. Doesn't make her less of an Oxford woman. Oxford, New Mexico, maybe. Listen, Tom, if you're gonna be such a snob, why did you even invite her to dinner? I didn't invite her. Daisy did. They knew each other before we were married. God knows where. It's a swell sweet. <laughs> oh, sorry. Open a window. 
open a window. You know, the thing to do is forget about the heat. You make it ten times worse crabbing about it. Why not let her alone about it, old sport? You're the one who wanted to go into the city. That's a cute expression of yours. What is? That old sport business. Where'd you pick that up? Now listen here. If you're going to make personal remarks, I won't stay here a minute. By the way, Miss Gatsby, I understand you're an Oxford woman. <sighs> not exactly. Yes, I understood you went there. Yes, I went there. I'd just like to know when. It was in 1919. Well, I can't really say I was an Oxford woman because I was only there about five months. It was after the armistice they gave a lot of the American soldiers an opportunity to go to any of the universities in England or France. I'll make you a drink. Wait a minute! I have more questions to ask Miss Gatsby! Ask away, old sport. What? What kind of row are you trying to cause in my house? She's not causing a row, you are! Have some self-control! Self-control? I guess the idea nowadays is just to let Miss Nobody from nowhere make love to your wife! Well, if that's the idea, you can count me out! It starts with people sneering at family institutions, and next thing you know, they'll have intermarriage between whites and blacks! We're all white here. Well, I've got something to tell you. Please, don't. Please, come on, let's, let's all go home. That's a good idea. Come on, Tom, nobody wants a drink. No, I want to hear what Miss Gatsby has to say about me. Hmm. Your wife doesn't love you. She never loved you. She loves me. You must be crazy. She never loved you, do you hear? She only married you because I was poor and she was tired of waiting for me. It was a mistake. It was a terrible, terrible mistake. But in her heart, she never loved anybody except for me. Sit down! Sit down, Daisy. What's been going on? I want to hear all about it. I told you exactly what's been going on for five years. You've been seeing this lady for five years? Not seeing. No. We couldn't see each other, but all this time, she never loved anybody except me. Oh, that's all. You're crazy! I can't speak for five years ago because I didn't know Daisy then, but the rest of it's a goddamn lie! She loved me when she married me and she loves me now! Daisy, tell her the truth. You never loved her. Why? How could I love her, possibly? You never loved her. I never loved her. Not at Capulani? No. Not when I carried you down from the punch bowl to keep your shoes dry? Daisy. Please don't. There, Jay. <laughs> there, Jay. You want too much. I love you now, isn't that enough? I can't help what's past. I did love Tom, but I loved you too. You loved me too? Even that's a lie. She didn't even know you were alive. There are things between me and Daisy that you can never know, things that we will never forget. I need to talk to Daisy alone. Even alone? I can't admit that I didn't love Tom. It just wouldn't be true. As if it matters to you. Of course it does! I'm gonna take better care of you now. You're not gonna take care of her at all. I'm not. Daisy's leaving you. Nonsense! I am, though. She's not leaving me! Certainly not for a common swindler who'd have to steal the ring you put on her finger. I, we're leaving Old Sport. Don't call me Old Sport! Please, Tom, I'm, I can't stand this. <sighs> Alright, you two go ahead in Miss Gatsby's car. Don't worry, Daisy. I think she realizes her little flirtation is over. <sighs> Nick, Jordan, we're going home in my car, but we have to take a little visit to Wilson's first. I've got to talk to him about the car. 
Nick? Do you need something? No, I just remember today is my birthday. What you did back there was really unnecessary. What? I can speak for myself, you know. Daisy. Don't! Don't assume you know everything about my marriage. I've been married to her for all these years that you've done nothing but wait. Daisy. Really? What have you been doing all of these years? This entire time you lived across the water, waiting for me to show up to one of your idiotic parties. Daisy. Eyes on the road, please. Have you even made any friends in these past five years? I've got Nick. I'm sorry, Jay. I'm sorry, too. I was too forward with Tom back there. Jay, you know I love you. I've never stopped these past five years. Neither did I, Daisy. But... Time isn't something you can just control and reclaim. Tom has been there for all these years that you weren't. But do you love her? Yes. No? I don't, I don't know. But you shouldn't have to wonder. You shouldn't have to wonder all these years I love you and you know I do, I, you know I love Jay. you. What more do you want from me, Jay? Daisy! That was when I realized that that Daisy Buchanan and Jay Gatsby had ran into Myrtle Wilson. Blinded by love, Gatsby did not know what he had just done. Blinded by love, Gatsby had done absolutely everything to prove his affection for Daisy. Is it all quiet out there? Yes, it's all quiet. You better come home and get some sleep. I want to wait here until Daisy goes to bed. Good night, old sport. Good night, Jay Gatsby, and goodbye. The next day, when I went out to cut the grass, I was told that Gatsby was found dead in her bathtub, a shot to the head. In the stars His butler had been the one to find her, an entire 12 hours after she had been shot. No one had any evidence of who had shot her, however, nor did anyone seem to care. But I cared enough to know what had happened to Jay Gats that night that Myrtle Wilson's husband had shot her, that George had thought Gatsby had done it because of her yellow car. A yellow car had killed Myrtle, and because of that, Gatsby had been mistakenly blamed for her death. How do I know all of this to be true? I don't. But the week following Gatsby's death, George Wilson had been found dead as well, hanging from the ceiling of his own home. Months after Gatsby's passing, I had received a phone call I had been eager to find others that would attend Gatsby's funeral around this time. This is Miss Carraway. Oh, this is Cliff Springer. The funeral's tomorrow, 3 o'clock, here at the house. I wish you'd tell anybody who'd be interested. Oh, I will. Of course I'm not likely to see anybody, but if I do... Of course you'll be there yourself. Well, I'll certainly try, but... What, what I called out about is... Wait a minute. How about saying you'll come? Well, the fact is, the truth of the matter is that I'm staying with some people up here in Greenwood, and they rather expect me to be with them tomorrow, some sort of picnic or something. Of course I will try, though. Huh? What I called up about was a pair of shoes I left there. I wonder if it would be too much of trouble to have the butler turn them on. You see, they're tennis shoes, and I'm sort of helpless about them. My address is... Jimmy sent me this picture. I think it's a very pretty picture. It shows up pretty well. It does. 
Have you seen him lately? He came to my house. He came to see me two years ago when he bought this house that I live in now. Of course, we was broke up when we run from home, but I see now there was a reason for it. Look at this book. I just came across it by accident. It just shows you, doesn't it? It just shows you. Mr. Gatz and I were the only ones to show up that afternoon. I had called everyone I knew that had known of Gatsby, and probably dozens of those had attended her massive parties. But nobody came. She had come a long way to this blue lawn, and her dream must have seemed so close that she could hardly fail to grasp it. She did not know that it was already behind her, somewhere back in that vast obscurity beyond the city, where the dark fields of the Republic rolled on under the night. Gatsby believed in the green light, the orgastic future that year by year recedes before us. It eluded us then, but that's no matter. Tomorrow we will run faster, stretch our arms out farther, and one fine morning. So we beat on, boats against the current, borne back ceaselessly into the past. You must not be looking, you must not be trying like a try.